Hello and welcome to Open Source Workplace. If it's your first time coming across the channel, please hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell so you learn to all upcoming videos. I'm uh, very happy to, to uh, have back with us Eduardo Gomez from Emitwise. Eduardo, how are you doing, sir? Doing really well, Steve. Thank you for having me again. So it's been a little while since you've been on the channel. Uh, what have you been up to and how has the lockdown and business been for you? Yeah, it's... Um... I mean, I mean, it's, it seems to just merge into one, to be honest. It's, to be honest, uh, I think we've reacted quite well to, to, the, to the lockdown. Um, you know, the transition away from, from working in the office was fairly effective. Naturally, we still have a small team. We're only eight full-time employees. So it, it was relatively easier for a, you know, a company like us to do that, to make that transition. But you know, something that that's been front of mind for us is to make sure that employee morale and, and, and culture, you know, stays front of mind. Um, and, and yeah, so it's just about kind of exploring some creative solutions around making sure that um, everyone is still happy, everyone is still engaged and, and, and kind of focus on the mission that we're trying to solve. No, that's great. That's great. I'm glad things are, are moving along and, uh, things are progressing for your organization. I know there's a few exciting things going on in the background, which hopefully we'll be able to unpack over the next few interviews that we did. But, uh, you know, the last time we spoke, we did a very broad interview. Very, We yeah. covered a lot of topics. And I'd really like to focus in on, you know, some real specifics this time, especially sure. around carbon accounting. So as one of you could tell me, you know, what is carbon accounting? And can you explain some examples? Yeah, sure. At its basic level i mean carbon accounting is is just the process of transforming raw material information raw material data um you know from the kilowatt hours of electricity that you consume to the uh, amount you spend on a particular material um transforming that information and then turning it into a carbon equivalent um without getting overly technical it's about taking this information mapping it to an estimate of you know, what the emissions that and the greenhouse gases that are released uh, from the creation of that process or product or service um, and transforming it into the, the, to the carbon equivalent. Got it. And so why is carbon accounting so important? I mean, carbon accounting is really important because um, you know, without actually measuring the, your carbon footprint, it's impossible to manage it. And it's the classic... Uh, it's the classic saying, you know, without measuring something, you can't manage it. Um, and given that, you know, we have one of the biggest crises that we face to date, um, you know, namely climate change, and that we need to manage climate change, we need to drastically reduce, reduce our global, you know, greenhouse gases over the coming years and decades. Um, we need to find an effective and efficient way to measure the carbon emissions that our companies and individuals um, on this planet uh, release. And, and last time you mentioned like the, there's three scopes, so potentially four scopes of carbon emissions. Um, and, you know, a lot of people focus and are told to focus on carbon three emissions. Is there a reason why we're told that or directed that way? Um, so, so just to clarify, there's sort of three main scopes um, for your carbon footprint. Again, don't want to go too technical, but just to keep things very high level, scope one emissions are around the direct emissions that you produce. Scope two emissions start to go into that area of utility. So it becomes indirect. So, you know, the emissions that you have from the electricity you purchase, natural gas you consume. Um, but then if you think about scope three, it's everything else you do as a business. So from employee commuting to business travel to everything you buy and, and, and the disposal of the products or services that you sell. So the way I think about it is while organizations have the most control over the scope one and two emissions, um, scope three emissions, while it's the most difficult to, to calculate because you don't have control over it, it's crucial, crucial, crucial that, you know, companies start engaging and reducing those emissions because, you know, depending on the industry and depending on the company, it can actually turn out to be the biggest source of emissions. And obviously that sounds really hard. <laughs> How do you do it? Yeah. So, um, okay. So 
for calculating scope three emissions, what you want to do is try to get as good as possible primary data from your tier one and uh, tier one suppliers and customers. So it's about, um, you know, if you're a large organization like Nestle, for example, um, you want to do a quick analysis of your carbon footprint, understand which are the which are the areas in your supply chain that emit, emit the most carbon dioxide uh, or, you know, green, uh, greenhouse gases in general, and then engage the, the tier one suppliers and customers that are most responsible for that. Um, you want to, it's really important that you bring along these customers and suppliers on the journey with you. Um, if they're not involved on the journey, then, and, and say, for example, you decide to just switch from one supplier to, to another that's more sustainable, while you're reducing your own carbon footprint, that supplier is just going to go somewhere else. And the mm. emissions are just going to be, going to continue elsewhere. So um, I guess going back and answering to your question, it's about getting this primary data from your suppliers. Naturally, as you can imagine, you know, a company like Nestle, they have 165,000 suppliers. So wow. you want to really, you want to look at the, you know, the most important suppliers, prioritize those and ensure you get the highest quality data as possible from them. So you did mention that, you know, yeah, you find a supplier who maybe doesn't have or is their emissions are high and just transferring is just sort of, it just means that that supplier is going to go somewhere else. Then, exactly. so how should organizations think about reducing scope three emissions? So, like I say, it's really about involving them in the journey with you. And it's yeah. really important that you as a sustainability manager at a large sustainability team at a large organization, um, really engage that supplier um, and, and show to them what are the business benefits that can come with reducing their carbon footprint. Um, you know, there's, there's, a, there's a whole list of, of, of business benefits that come with reducing your emissions. But if they start to see um, reducing their carbon footprint, not as a tick box exercise for their CSR you know, requirements, but more as a, really, as a, as a way to create um, a competitive advantage within their industry um, and a way to strengthen their relationship with their key customers, um, that's, how you, that's how you bring them on board and that's how you really create the engagement that's necessary. One final question is, so what does it mean to offset carbon emissions? Because is, is that a strategy? And that's maybe one of the things that you were referencing previously. Yeah. For offsetting, what you want to do is use that as kind of the last stage of your sustainability journey. Um, if you think about offsetting, it's, it's about sequestering carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. Um, so it's about either preventing trees from being cut down you know, you, by preventing trees from being cut down, you're ensuring that the trees continue to reduce the carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. Or, for example, one of the projects that we were really involved in was planting seagrass underneath the oceans and, mm -hmm. and, and, and using the seagrass to reduce the, uh, the, the CO2 from the oceans themselves. Um, so, while it's crucial, especially if you want to become a, a net zero business, you know, become carbon neutral to, to actually use these offsetting, um, the way that we see it, it's it, that it's the last step in the process. And, and the reason I say it is because if you start with carbon offsetting um, and you don't do anything to reduce your own carbon footprint in areas that it's actually very possible and very, you're able to, um, then you're really kind of just, you know, almost like shoving the, uh, the problem underneath the rug and, and hoping, mm. uh, hoping it'll just go away. Um, so that's why I say it's a little bit controversial because um, many companies will just start with the carbon offsetting, become a carbon neutral organization, reap the benefits and the market benefits from becoming a carbon neutral organization. But we always encourage to use emit wise, you know, measure, monitor, reduce your carbon footprint as much as possible. And then obviously there will be res residual emissions that are integral to how you operate as a company that's going to be very difficult to reduce. Uh, and that's what you need to offset. Look, Eduardo, thank you. And obviously we'll have links to so people can reach out to you, can reach out to Mitwise and learn more. So please do check out those links below. And uh, look, Eduardo, as always, thank you. I appreciate your time. I appreciate your no. insights. No, thank you, Steve. I uh, really enjoyed being here.